showtime. The Capital G Show starts right now. What's up, YouTube? Capital G here, looking back at the fantastic year that was 2015 and all the shocking and memorable events that took place. I'm also thinking about the cards that made the biggest impact on the year because there were quite a few of those. So just like last year, I've decided to compile a list, which I'm going to call the top 10 cards of 2015, the Yugi And just to be clear, I am ranking these cards based on their impact on the competitive meta and then, of course, the power of the actual card. I will also only be including cards that were first released in the TCG in the 2015 calendar year so anything released last year or anything that was reprinted this year is immediately disqualified and finally there will only be one card represented per archetype so if you don't see your favorite card that was released this year maybe there's a card that was in its family that happened to make the list so with all that said let's get right down to the list Number 10, Cyframe Lord Omega, High Speed Riders, arguably the most played synchro in the game today. Omega was originally thought to just be a great ace monster for the Cyframe archetype, but sooner than later, people realized that this gem is actually one of the best go-to monsters in just about any situation, able to easily dodge removal, gain information on the opponent's hand, and recycle resources all in one massive package. I mean, what more could you ask for in a monster? Number nine, lose one turn at Cross Souls. In a year that saw two of the most powerful Floodgate trap cards of all time, both reached limited status and skill drain and vanity's emptiness, duelists often wondered what would stop their opponent from amassing huge boards of special summon monsters with the intent of killing them. Well, luckily, lose one turn was Kunami's alternative route to the other Floodgates. One player would let their opponent special summon as many monsters as their heart desired, but they would reap absolutely no benefits from doing so. As said, special summon Summon monsters would be granted no effects that turn, would not be able to attack that turn, and then of course would be put in the very vulnerable defense position. Number eight, Cosmo Farm Girl, Clash of Rebellion. As good as Darth Destroyer is, and I'm sure some may have wanted it to take this spot, Cosmo did win a YCS before the card was even released, and it's largely due to the utility that Farm Girl gives the deck. For you see, the force is strong with this one, giving the deck the ability to pull off some crazy powerful OTKs, giving it their field spell, which is integral to the deck's win condition and best of all you can summon her straight from the deck during either player's turn using emergency teleport Number seven, Ritual Beast Ultimate Conahawk, The Secret Forces. This is yet another monster to prove that stats can largely mean nothing because effects are usually the be all end all. Conahawk is pretty much the heart and soul of the Ritual Beast deck, and this same deck, shockingly enough, took a quarter of this year's North American WCQ, which might I add was over 2,000 participants. Conahawk looping allowed players to go offensive, they got defensive cards, pretty much whatever they needed for any situation. This card granted them access to its limitation was also pretty puzzling as you only need one copy to actually start the loop number six mass hero dark law hero strike structure deck our sixth bot goes to the long arm of the law that allowed anti-meta duelists to re-establish themselves in the competitive Yu-Gi-Oh scene. Dark Law was a blanket macro cosmos only for your opponents, and it generally steered them away from searching from their deck. This kind of made it a one-card win condition against the likes of Necroz and Cleefort, and even if your opponent wasn't using a deck that generally relied on searchability or their graveyard, it was still a card that they massively had to respect. Number five, Brilliant Fusion, Clash of Rebellion. Somewhere, what was supposed to be a nice little addition to the Gem Knight archetype ended up being one of the most splash cards in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. Brilliant Fusion is literally a one card toolbox. It gets you potentially two normal summons, a trick clown or damage juggler in the graveyard, opens up plays for Mass Chameleon. Brilliant Fusion basically makes any hand good. Number four, Luster Pendulum the Draco Slayer, Clash of Rebellion. Easily one of the best pendulum cards in the entire game, maybe ever printed. Luster Pendulum has almost risen to staple level in any deck that uses the mechanic. Not only is it a tuner, but it's one that has excellent stats, and more important than that, it advances your game states. The fact that this guy also has his own XC synchro, I mean, those are just bonus icing on cake. 
Number three, Elder Entity Norton, 2015 Megatons, and a year packed full of some amazingly powerful fusion monsters such as Canahawk, Dark Law, and Fight for Tiger. Norton stands above them all as the overall most powerful and arguably most summoned extra deck monster in the entire game. Well, outside of Castell, anyways. We all knew that Norton was going to be a game changer, hence why it recently was banned in the OCG, and predictably, instant fusion has been splashed into a just about every deck under the sun so that you can reach that ever powerful rank 4 toolbox. Number 2, Performage Damage Juggler, Clash of Rebellion. If you wanted to pick out a single card this year that flat out does it all, Damage Juggler probably is going to be the card that you picked. While he isn't a statistical powerhouse, he sure as hell is one when it comes to utility. Damage Juggler not only stops all types of damage, which makes it an instant out to the very potent Wavering Eyes, but he also searches out the entire Performage archetype, not including himself, of course. Damage Juggler is not only a high utility card, but it's one of the cards that can single-handedly convert defense to offense. That's pretty damn impressive. Honorable mentions include Wavering Eyes, Galaxy Cyclone, Teller Knight Telemius, Infernoid Decatron, and Star Seraph Scepter. Number one, Ty, the Necroz of Unicor and the Necroz of Valkyris, the Secret Forces. You guys can hate me if you will. I will admit openly this is the first time in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Hierarchy's history that I have ever had a Ty for first place. But after hours of debating this amongst myself, I literally could not put one card ahead of the other. Look, now Necroz was easily the most dominant deck of the year, maybe in the last three years, and I had to pretty much have a Necroz card here, but when you break it down, I think that both cards pretty much have equal value in the deck. Valkyris is such an incredibly powerful effect, and the hand stops opponents from being able to push and keeps all of your monsters safe from battle phase. You know, at the same time, it's just as impressive when it's on the field, giving you a potential draw to every single turn. That's absurd. When you look at the Necroz of Unicor, this was was the card that locked out a lot of decks from being able to use their utility boss monsters use those exceeds and those synchros and those fusion monsters they were just kind of left at the mercy of this card and its recycling effect was i mean i think that that was pretty nifty as well Heck, maybe you guys can debate what was the most important card to the Necro's archetype, but quite frankly, I don't really think that any one of them stands above the other, and I think that they all kind of needed to work in tandem for the deck to be so successful. So, let me know what you guys thought of my list. Were there any cards that I forgot that were released in 2015? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching, as always. Subscribing makes life happy.